who are doing better than you. But let me, let me advise you on this. I mentor so many people. Once you ask me for money, you must be disabled. If you ask me for money and you are not, yes, yeah, I want to talk to you, I will give you money. If you ask me for money, you don't have a leg, yes, I will give you money. If you don't have money, if you ask me for money, you don't have hands, you are the one. Once you have hand, brain, and you have God, you can't ask me for money. Because I didn't ask you for it. And if you take no for an answer, I will not accept the mobility, I will not stay on one spot, I will not stagnate, and I will keep moving and trust the future. Keep moving, 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 trust the future. You just keep moving. You can't accept less, you can't stay stagnant. You keep moving one day. You will stand here, tell me your own story, and inspire you to come to work. When you have mentors, when you please the government to go ask people for money, that's the smallest thing she has. The smallest thing in the hands of people is money. Their greatest asset is the quality of their thinking, the strength of their character, the network they have. A man with network is a man with power. You don't need to chase money, chase power. When you need quality, don't go ask for money. Ask for their time. Ask questions. Have you failed before? How was it? How did you deal with it? Have you laughed before? Yes. How did you deal with it? Have you faced an embarrassment before? Look at my situation. How do you think I can handle it? Let me tell you what mentors will do in your life. Mentors will help you to expand your options. Mentors will help you to expand your options and show you and do. Expand your options. I want it to go inside them. I want them to digest it. And everything the man has said is for their further improvement. You know, he explained to us where he came from. He said he did a four year course and he didn't pass in the court. He had to go back to start from the first year again to the fourth year. So he's just saying that tomorrow will be great if you're determined. If you are well mentored and if you can learn from people who have gone through very difficult times, he said that it, tomorrow would always be better. You know, so it's just a way of giving hope to the youth that tomorrow is theirs if they refocus and re energize their energy. I should know. So, what's your message to them? My message to them is that Nigeria shall be great again. Nigeria has been driven by an experienced uh, driver this time around, and there's so much hope. Uh, we're the hope of the black man. Nigeria's economy will improve, and if it improves, it will create jobs, jobs, jobs for the youth. So I wish I was a youth now, because I see so much huge potential that we didn't have during our time. My first session in politics in 2015, the primaries was competitive, was transparent. Everybody left the venue happy that they participated and their votes count. So that's my assurance going forward 2025. I'm going to be pushing for everything to be merit based and transparent. That is what will foster Sorry. the inclusiveness, the faith that you're talking about. I think the training is, is quite good. It's quite good. It's an eye opener to some of our youth. Yes, I believe that uh, it's like ice on the cake for him. It's like just like the the the, the moderator talked about. It's like giving you Jimmy Bezos is giving you the infrastructure. Now he's now telling you your knowledge base, your practical experience is key to individual success. My name is Dr. Abiodun Fatah Abata, the Dean of Students Affairs, Liberal State University. The, the challenge is that there is a lamentation dilemma among our youth, especially with regards to the fact that um, they are not accorded their rightful place in politics. But the point you know, um, I was making today is that uh, even you know, apart from those challenges, 
our young people need to even upskill themselves to move beyond all those challenges. Uh, the fact is that they need to reinvent themselves because most of them, they don't have the quality for them to be able to, to participate you know, fully in politics, particularly in terms of uh, knowledge gap and capacity. You know, some of them don't even have a clear-cut agenda. And on the basis of that, there is need for them to stop complaining, to stop blaming the leaders, to stop complaining that, okay, the electoral process is, is uh, monetized. They need to also, you know, reinvent themselves in such a way that they put up the best of attitude, best of values, you know, that can make them to be actors and recipients of the polit uh, political process. Well, honestly, this is the third of its kind um, in terms of um, leadership training for young people in the division. I think for me, you know, is the best thing to do. I think for me is, um, you know, um, it's a good opportunity for our young people to be able to inculcate, you know, leadership characteristics, you know, leadership, you know, uh, knowledge and capacity for them to become a better person in the community, such so that when they have opportunity of you know, taking up any leadership position, they will be able to perform extremely very well. So we look forward to more of this um, opportunity that can enhance the capacity of our young people.